So this is chapter 14. And uh, you will see one thing that's uh, different as you are looking through chapter 14, that, um, that, it, uh, that frankly, it involves more math than uh, previous chapters you have seen before. And there's a quite simple reason for that. And the simple reason for that is these modules, all of them are the OpenStax college of physics modules linked directly uh, within our textbook. You will see that for each of the sections, it's all page by OpenStax. It's because these are direct links to the, the OpenStax college of physics modules and I didn't do any modifications here. Um, the short story for that is I kind of looked through each of the sections and it looked like none of them required the trigonometry. They all only required the algebra. And, um, and I thought <laughs> it was right on the border of where I would say, you know, it's too much math, I need to cut it down versus um, it's just enough math, just enough to get it through. So, so I just linked it directly. And so far I haven't received any feedback from folks saying that it's too much math. So I'm just sticking with it. And, um, and I think it's a good content as it is. So, so that's the one, one of the things you will see. Um, so it's uh, broken out into six sections and uh, I'll just uh, briefly, you know, minute or so each of the sections, um, kind of the key point of what they cover. So section 14.1. Einstein's postulates. This is really the beginning point of special relativity. It's a quite a bit of contrast from quantum mechanics where we take a winding path through all the experimental discoveries. Special relativity, you could almost say it just falls out of Einstein's head. I mean, that's not the correct description because there were experimental evidences pointing to the Einstein's um, kind of consolidation of his theory. But um, to a great deal, you could say all of the key points of special relativity is contained within these two postulates of uh, special relativity. The first postulate, and the second postulate. And in a separate lecture, I'll get into more depth about what each of these postulates mean and how to make a sense of them. And uh, at the end of the day, these two postulates say everything there is, there, everything that you need to introduce about special relativity. After you have those, if you are good enough in math, you can actually drive the remainder of special relativity. In fact, that's what the textbook does. Starting with these two postulates, the textbook in section 14.2, it'll demonstrate to you an aspect of special relativity that's quite counterintuitive and one that I will address in more depth in a separate lecture, which is what we call relativity of simultaneity. Um, it's addressed in this section here. And I was actually reviewing this just prior to this meeting and, um, these two paragraphs have some error in it. So I want you to note that, that it's not correct. And I was, that was confusing me because um, I actually submitted an error card to fix that. And so I need to do, decide what to do with the, our textbook, but it does look like it's fixed in the, it's a fixed in the open text version of the textbook. So if you want to see the fixed version, this is what, this is what I would tell you to do. Um, in this page, I actually do link it to the, the chapter that I'm exactly copying. Uh, so I don't know why the uh, fixes didn't just uh, trickle down. It should have. I don't know why it didn't. I'll just uh, note that it didn't. When you go to chapter 28 of College of Physics, it's identical to, it should have been identical to our chapter 14. When you go to section 28.2, you will see that um, the portion around it here has been reworked. So when you look at here, what they describe here in this paragraph and the paragraph before, that is the correct statement. And, um, and I'll go a little bit more into that in our, our own separate lecture on, uh, on simultaneity. 
but uh, I want you to note because our current textbook does have an error and I don't really have a way to fix it right now. So I want you to kind of go to this portion of college of physics and read the correct statement there. Um, so, so yeah, the, the, the so in your textbook, you will see us using these two postulates to drive one very counterintuitive thing about special relativity. And this is not something that you have to discover experimentally. You can actually arrive at it theoretically. And um, in the same section, we drive the time dilation formula, which you will use in some of the homework questions. This is the time dilation formula. Um, wait, is it boxed somewhere? Uh, it's not boxed. Well, time dilation formulas within these paragraphs. And um, you can also go through a similar derivation to get the length contraction form formula. So I think because this is where it begins to kind of take a lot of work to actually drive it. So I don't think your textbook drives it, just gives you the formula. <laughs> I, I don't think it is really conscious derivation. Um, so, and, and the formula is good. Uh, that's what you should use for your homework. And I'll just uh, leave things there. And there's um, a few more formulas that your textbook is driving. And uh, I, let me leave it uh, this way. Uh, so I do encourage you to uh, read through these sections, um, do your best to, to understand. And to the extent that any piece of algebra or mathematics is difficult to follow, I wouldn't worry about it so much because it's not something that you need to reproduce. Um, there are some homework questions that have you used the relativistic velocity addition formula. I think there's one question where you have to use it. Use it and then, you know, be done with it. I, I think I made sure that on your timed assessments that you won't have to use this uh, rather complicated formula. You know, it is quite complicated looking formula and, um, to make sure you know where to look it up for your homework and, and you're good. And so the first, uh, first four sections or so of chapter 14 covers what I might call relativistic kinematics. It started uh, with the introduction of Einstein's postulate, which tell you the kind of the new thing, although not quite exactly new, get into that in the detail of the lecture. New thing that you're introducing in special relativity and the consequences of that as far as describing motion goes, time taken in motion, um, length that you measure and velocities. These are kind of the topics that we covered in chapter two, kinematics. And the last two sections are what I would call relativistic dynamics. These, these describe to you the changes that you need to make to the dynamical concepts of momentum and energy. Those are the concepts that were introduced the way back in chapters uh, four and five, <laughs> and you continue to use as you're looking at quantum mechanics. And as you are looking at special relativity, we'll also look at how our idea of momentum needs to change and what parts actually remain the same. And, uh, and this is the modified formula for momentum. It looks uh, remarkably similar to what you are used to seeing. It just has additional factor, Lorentz factor gamma, that um, your homework has you do a lot of practice with. And, and um, using this relativistic momentum, you can drive a new form for relativistic energy. Uh, neither your textbook nor I would actually do the derivation because derivation requires calculus and I don't want to use calculus here. But uh, one thing that is interesting is, um, so yeah, so we necessarily have to skip um, our introduction to the idea of rest energy because I think to introduce it, you really have to go through the derivation of kinetic energy. And when you do the derivation of kinetic energy, that's where, yeah, you would see the form that's really um, suggestive <laughs> of uh, some hidden nature. And oh wait, wait, yeah, yeah. So okay, so here it kind of does. So so without the actual derivation, if you were to do the derivation, this is what you end up with. Um, you end up with this expression for kinetic energy. 
that's kind of what you get at by trying to do the calculation for the work. And this form, you know, gamma y minus one, that, um, that uh, leads people to ask questions. Um, why is this, there is this uh, additional thing here? Is kinetic energy not the total energy? Is it uh, some kind of total minus of something? And that minus of something, this is something, turns out to be the rest energy. So, um, so, so that's, uh, wait, not here. Uh, yeah, I guess this is the best. So, um, so this is kind of a backward way of introducing it. But if you imagine starting out from here and then just to suppose, postulate that something that has mass M has something that we might refer to as rest energy, then you could say, oh, so rest energy plus kinetic energy would give me the total energy. And um, you know, at this point, it's all kind of inspired guess. And experimentally, it turns it turn it it works out, and you will see how that works out in chapter fifteen. It's really only in the nuclear reactions where change of energy is large enough that you can actually see the changes of rest energy that shows up in nuclear reactions, and you will see some discussion of that in this long chapter, um, not in depth, but some. So that's uh, the chapter overview of chapter 14. The first uh, section introduces the Einstein's two postulates of special relativity. And uh, we talk about some of their consequences, especially, especially as they relate to kinematics. And then the last two sections modify our established ideas of momentum and energy so that they are consistent with Einstein's two postulates of special relativity. So, so yeah, that's a chapter overview. Uh.